exactly. And we're already getting good coverage here. I've had nothing but good coverage so far. We've probably had 10 AP stories. I've been on television. I've been on national television twice. We're getting good coverage here. Every time we do something, we have a conference call for the media, and we're routinely getting between 10 and 15 people on our conference calls for statewide media. So uh, there's a lot going on, but you're right. The key thing that puts me over the top is if that money bomb successful August 20th. Well, we'll be sure and have Lyman on, Trevor Lyman and yourself, to uh, try to, or some folks from your campaign, try to get that, maybe have your daddy on that day to plug the money bomb. But That'd I don't know great. about all the stupid uh, election rules, but I'm uh, he should be able to do that. All right, we're going to come back, get into what your agenda would be in the U.S. Senate on the carbon tax, gun control, and a lot more. Stay with us. Dr. Rand Paul's our guest. Well, we've like crashed their server. Our millions of great listeners. Folks, we got to get Dr. Rand Paul a CDN, Contra Content Distribution Network. That's the only thing that keeps up InfoWars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. So we've, we've been through this. And uh, we've got the sites that crash everybody. And the only way they're going to keep their sites up during the money bomb and all the rest of this is with a CDN. So whoever the IT guys are, tell them. CDNs. We can tell you we've been through a lot of CDNs. we got two companies that we know are good. We've got a backup CDN. But, yeah, you got to be able to take a million people visiting your site at one time to uh, really be effective. But going back to Dr. Rand Paul, that's exciting, though, that the audience has crashed your server, though. <laughs> that is. That's, a good, that's better than a Nielsen poll, I think. <laughs> uh, listen, there's so much I can throw up, but I want to get into investigating the Fed. You know, your father's called for criminal investigations by state grand juries saying that's constitutional. What about investigating Al Gore, who openly owns the controlling stock in two of the carbon trading companies? And the bill they passed in the House says that, that, that the federal agencies can just levy any tax they want, including toilet paper taxes. What would you do about that? My prediction is is that if cap and trade gets through, we will have an army of armed EPA agents, thousands of them. And apparently... They've already said that. That's what I mean. The EPA already has armed guards. As they have armed troopers and investigators. No, they I call think, them climate cops. No, it's. <laughs> I mean, your prediction's already true. Yeah, Sorry. that's what I mean. We have them, but I predict that there will be thousands of new. Because thousands of, of new, yes. Yes, because you know what's going to happen is Every time you sell your house or rent your apartment, you're going to have to prove to somebody that you've got energy efficiency. No, that's in the bill. They say home exactly inspections. Right. I'm sorry, go ahead. I mean, I start ranting on this issue. Yeah, you're exactly right. We debated it recently. I, I spoke before the coal-producing counties, and that's about 30 counties in Kentucky. And I debated the main Democrat opponent, Jack Conway. And Jack Conway got up there, like so many career politicians, he got up there and said, well... I'm not really sure if I'm a, uh, against cap and trade or if I'm for it, but I want to be part of the negotiated legislation, so I'm not going to take a, a real position on it until after I'm elected. And what's amazing about this is he doesn't even sense, being a career politician, he's afraid to make a stand, but he doesn't even sense how much there's opposition, even among mainstream people within Kentucky, because of what it's going to do to energy. Well, they admit they're going to put in the bill a 50% tax on all coal and, and, and what, 54% of all our energy, our power, from factories to light bulbs in our houses to, to the hot water heaters is from coal. I mean, does anybody have an idea what that, I got family in East Texas. The only jobs left are prisons and, 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 and coal mines and the power plants that burn it. Right. And I think, once again, it's like inflation. We have to <laughs> mostly hurt and will hurt disproportionately when your electric bill goes up at the end of the month. If you make $200,000 a year, you don't feel it. But if you make $25,000 a year and your electric bill goes up, you get hurt. And that's what's going to happen to cap and trade. Like any other price increase, it disproportionately hurts the working class and the poor and those on fixed income, the retired folks all the same constituencies that the Democrats are always going out and winning those votes. That's why I always tell people our message is good, but we need to know how to present our message to gain more votes. Well, well, I mean, Dr. Paul, when you've studied politics for a long time, your dad's been a congressman for decades, you're a medical doctor, you're a smart guy, looking at Obama's record, did, in your book, does he take the cake for lying, 
I mean, everything he says he's gone back on. And then he said he wouldn't raise taxes unless you made a quarter million dollars a year as a couple. These carbon taxes are going to raise taxes on everything and, like you just said, hurt the poorest people. Well, the amazing thing is he can do it with a straight face. As long as his teleprompter is working, he can do it with a straight face and a smile, and he can tell us how he's not going to do something at the same time his other hand is actually doing it. So I guess it's just a, the amazing gall of politicians who tell us this and tell us they're not going to do something, and meanwhile they're doing exactly that. I think it's an amazing uh, feat how far we are going to lurch to the left and how big government's going to grow in the first six months to a year. But I think there'll be a backlash, and the only good thing I think we have going for us is there will be a backlash in 2010. And in my own particular race, I think Kentucky will be ripe to run against Obama because he did very poorly in the Democrat primary here against Hillary Clinton. She clobbered him by 30 points. And then even McCain, who didn't do that well and ran a lackluster campaign, he also killed Obama in Kentucky. So Kentucky is sort of a split state, but also a state that really doesn't like far left-wing politics. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, look, you're right. There's going to be an explosive backlash. It's going to catapult you into the U.S. Senate and their election fraud.